very welcome to today's episode of The State We're In. We don't see very much on mainstream media here in Ireland about the state of play in Australia at the moment, but we do see a lot about it on social media. And I'm joined today by an Irish girl living in Melbourne in Southern Australia, who's going to chat to us now and give us an insight into what it is actually like there at the moment. Bernie, you're very welcome to the state we're in. Hello, Anna. How are you? Bernie, if we could begin, maybe you might tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and your background. Right. Well, I'm 35. I moved to Australia 10 years ago to Sydney um, and lived in Sydney for almost five years and almost five years in, in Melbourne. So... I um, have two children here, uh, 19 months old and a four year old and my partner, a cork man. And I'm a bit of a mix. I'm a born in Ackill, moved to Carrick and Shannon, Ros- County Roscommon, but went to school in Leitrim. So good mix. <laughs> yes, it, 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 it most certainly is. Now, I know that there has been um, a long story about COVID beginning in February, March 2020. So rather than going through the whole story of COVID in Australia, um, it would take us the whole day to to, to talk about it. Let's just focus on what's happening right now at the moment. So tell me, what is the situation in Melbourne as we speak? And for our viewers who have no idea about how the political system operates in uh, your country, just tell us a little bit about that first. Right. So I'll try to keep it as short and sweet as I can. So in Australia, we have federal law of Australia. And then we have the Australia is made up of six states and two territories. And each territory and state has their own state or territorial law. Um, so the federal, it, it, I think it has like four or five main things uh, that it oversees, such as like our telephones and internet and things like that. But then state law, uh, because our states are so different and diverse weather wise and like what uh, natural disasters we do come to here, it's bushfires, Queensland is flooding or drought um, in New South Wales. It's all very mixed. So each state is responsible like for allocating its funds and doing its own fundraising also. Um, So yeah, so we under operate under state law. So what you're telling me is that the COVID laws vary from state to state. So tell me about uh, how the COVID laws are operating in the state of Victoria where you live. Victoria, I'm sure a lot of people are aware we've had the longest lockdown in the world, in the world, with some of the strictest, strictest things. Us and North Korea and some other country were the only three countries in the world that had a curfew. So we were locked in our homes from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. You had to have a valid reason to be out in those hours. Now, we have a lot of police. Our police are armed. We have the army. We have cert. We have different categories of police here as well. So it's not just your the Shia Kona, you'll have the others as well that are armed. Uh, basically, our uh, things that we went through were we had five kilometre uh, radius from your home. You're allowed to leave for, uh, within, be within five kilometres of your home. You're allowed to be outdoors for an hour a day for exercise or shopping or one of those um reasons but essential reasons to be out of home um in which your shopping bags might get checked to make sure you were actually buying milk and bread and only one person per household um you couldn't be together and if you had to leave your children at home unless it was absolutely necessary um so you have to qr code into every single facility you're in Every single shop, every playground, if you go to a playground, they actually shut the playgrounds at one point as well. So there was no playgrounds. Uh, Everybody has an app on their phone and you have to QR code. So for contact tracing purposes, it's mandatory 
it's mandatory that you check in everywhere. So even going to the playground, I check in at the swing, I check in at the slide, I check in at the monkey bars. Extraordinary. I know here in Ireland, a lot of older people wouldn't have a smartphone. They just maybe have an old Nokia. So what about elderly people in Australia? That um, Does that mean that all elderly people have to have um, a smartphone in order to get out? No, there is security on every door. And so that can manually sign you in. Oh, right. So, and if it's not security, a lot of shops have their own security. Um, imagine going to your local <laughs> super value and there's Mr. Security Man wanting your name and phone number. Um, that's what that's what's happening. And if not, it could just be a shop worker, you know, but everybody mm-hmm. it's it's mandatory. So for contact tracing purposes and when I mean contact tracing, they literally follow you from door to shop and home again you know um but yeah like even now Anna I have a helicopter over me and this is we're out of lockdown apparently but I mean we have hourly checks in the helicopters of people and where they are and and everything especially when the curfew was on so they were wanting to make sure people were in their homes and not uh gatherings at people's homes or you know lockdown meant lockdown and that was it um, yeah, and, and masks, masks to be outside. The minute you set foot out, even putting your bin at the end of the road, you have to have your mask on. You have to have your mask outside at all times. And what are the penalties then if you are caught violating the rules? So there's a couple of different penalties. It varies like as to how, uh, whether you're a repeat offender, a serial offender or what the, what the crime is. Um, you know, you could have had good intentions to have your mask on you and it might have blew away in the wind or, you know, but uh, it it can vary from $100, $200 to $500 or $1,600. If you've had somebody at your house, even if they were in the garden, it's $1,600. And then it depends whether you're an individual or whether you're a business. So businesses had massive, massive, hundreds of thousands, their fines. Um, if they were found to be operating outside of what they were uh, being told. And I mean, we have a lot of undercover, uh, plain clothes people, COVID marshals, they're calling them, the special authority people that have no authority, really, because they're not they're not police um, oh. that have been wandering around into premises as well. So they're kind of circulating incognito, as it were, spying on people. So you oh. would... You would have no idea that uh, the person standing beside you is actually, a, a, you know, part of the covert police to see what you're up to. Is that what you're telling me? Oh, yeah. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. No, no. Unless like, you know what I mean? They they approached you and started asking you, you know, or, you know, check to see if you've checked in. And, and the thing is with here is the police are never far away. The police okay. are never far away. So they just call them. They detain you, the police come, you know. Okay. So can you tell me, please, then, if um, they have started to roll out any vaccines in Victoria? Yeah, so so uh, um, I'll, I'll use the word apparently because I find the figures a bit unbelievable sometimes. Um, I can't trust, you can't trust what numbers are coming through. I mean, we've had massive protests um the last week but and yesterday being our biggest I estimated between 300 and 500 thousand people yesterday in Victoria alone now all through Brisbane Sydney there was massive protests yesterday and had thousands and thousands and thousands of people turning up hundreds of thousands um and I mean looking at their figures they're saying oh a couple of thousand and you look and there's like 300 thousand people <laughs> it's it's pretty crazy so they, they say we're 90% vaccinated here in Victoria. Here it's vaccinated versus unvaccinated. So unvaccinated people, um, it's all vaccine passports into everywhere. So for the vaccinated, they have to show their papers at every single door. Every time you QR code in, your phone, will, it comes up with your, your cert on it and you have to show that cert going in the door. Um, and the unvaccinated basically are still in lockdown as in they can just go to the shops the super essential so unvaccinated cannot go and buy shoes they cannot buy clothes 
Uh, they can't go to pubs, cafes, restaurants, cinemas, uh, sporting events, nothing, nothing. Um, even in terms of the hospitals and GPs, if you're any cold or cough or cold and you're unvaccinated, um, you don't attend the GP. You have to go and get a PCR test done and provide a negative test before they'll see you. With emergency, slightly different protocol, like, but I mean, unless you're dying on your feet, <laughs> but they will, the same thing, they'll uh, have to check you. If you're unvaccinated, they'll have to do a PCR test before actually allowing you to uh, access treatment. So it's, it's getting, it's getting very strict, very strict. And, there, and another thing, Anna, that's quite surprising, there's reports coming in from some of the other states like Queensland and that about people having their uh, Medicare, which is our uh, health insurance here that we use, um, which everybody pays into out of their taxes every single year. They are, that they're calling on that for the unvaccinated not to have Medicare cover to attend their GPs and hospitals um, and, and things like that. So it, it, it's, it's really bad. It's, it's becoming pretty difficult then for the unvaccinated. Now, uh, you were telling me earlier that um, you have grave concerns about the proposed bill that is being, um, that's coming before your, um, your parliament. We have a bill proposed in Parliament at the moment, um, in our state Parliament. So our Premier is Daniel Andrews, and he is um, bringing through a bill, pushing forward a bill last Tuesday um, when it was voted against in opposition. Uh, he's trying to vote it in as an emergency um, before the 15th of December with this, when the state of emergency runs out. The state of emergency only runs for 21 months. So something else has to replace that. And we get that and we can accept that. However, the bill that he is proposing it basically gives him all power over everything. Um, he has more power than the chief health officer. He can disregard everything that he's been told. And the best part about it is, is that he claims he'll have oversight because he will employ, he will have six or seven people on a panel of his advisors who will be his mates. Um, even if they tell him, no, that's a terrible idea, he can still say, well, I think it's great, so I'm going ahead anyway. Um, so there will be no say. And once he says, uh, once it goes into bill, that it becomes law. So nobody will be able to challenge anything in court. The judges will have to abide by it. And this bill allows him to discriminate against people on uh, based on their, their sex, their gender, sexuality, um, ethnicity, your religion, your color, your everything. So we have quarantine facilities being built at the moment and we don't know the exact use of those considering the only people allowed into the country have to be vaccinated and have to be a resident or citizen, which you're allowed quarantine in your own home house. So why are these facilities being built? There's a lot of question about those. Um, like his his bill and he can do what he wants when he wants. And the biggest joke about it all is that he will be able to uh, declare a pandemic in Victoria, even though it might there mightn't be one case. There mightn't even be one case in Australia, but there could be a case of Ebola in South Africa and he'll be able to declare that a threat to the Victorian people and lock us down again. And that's it. Nobody can say anything. Nobody can do anything. And the way things are looking is it's been a struggle and there's been so hard. He's had to mandate no jab, no job, no jab, no play for the children here in Australia or in Victoria, should I say, and no jab, no job in, in Victoria. So um, a lot of people, nurses, doctors, policemen, everybody. And it's the only people that were not mandated were federal. So courts and people of the courts or the ministers were not mandated so they didn't have to get the vaccine but everybody else was vaccinated had to be vaccined vaccinated by a certain like they were given two weeks to have their first dose and all of this or it's no job so um they basically pushed everything onto the employers here and businesses so they have to push people to be 
vaccinated or they don't have a job. And then if those employers are employing people that aren't vaccinated and which, you know, if you get found out, it's massive, massive fines and massive penalties and, and jail time, jail time. And, and this bill, this bill will also enable if you're caught with no mask, for example, um, being outside your front door with no mask, it's $92,000 of a fine. This is how big the fines become. And a business is $450,000 for breaking protocol. This seems like massive overreach on the part of the governor. But obviously, he is in power. His, uh, I believe that he is um, the leader of the Labour Party. So he has the backing of his his um, M- MPs. Um, is there any kind of a pushback? Oh, there's big pushback now. Big pushback. People are talking. Everyone's talking. Everyone. Like, the protests now that we're seeing on the streets are not just unvaccinated. It's vaccinated as well. Um, because it's no longer about that. Everybody realises, hold on a second. It's not about... You know, there's been enough division and enough segregation now between all oh, vaccinated and unvaccinated. It's now against, well, hold on a second. Why is the government a daily feature in my life? Why is my child asking me, who's Daniel Andrews? Who's Dan Andrews? You know, a four year old. Um, because these words are everywhere. But the pushback is we now have our ministers that are uh, in opposition are at the front of these protests, are at the front of them. We have the Victorian Bar Association, so we had 60 barristers write a letter, um, an open, pen and open letter to the government saying that they did not back this. And they were caught out on a lie, actually. When they, when they first put forward this bill, they said they had the backing of the Victorian Bar Association. And the Bar Association came out 24 hours later and said, no, no, we had one chat back last June for 40 minutes And that was just a very brief, we did not know what was in this bill. So no, and now that we have looked at it, because it's 119 pages and they had like 24 hours to look over it, it, they said there's so many amendments to be made by it. So we have our opposition, we have the people on the streets, we have police officers, we have doctors, we have nurses, we have so many people. We've the human rights organization are against this. Like it's a massive, massive overreach where the government are reaching into every single person's home. Every single person. And what you're telling me is that there is a massive, massive pushback from the uh, opposition parties, from the judiciary and from the people. So what is the current state of play with the bill? Has it come before the parliament yet? So they brought it on Tuesday. Um, They brought it on Tuesday in which they said they would have, it had to be voted five times in the day. So parliament here is streamed live. So anybody can can watch it. And you see these ministers literally tearing strips off each other. And it's a cat fight. And you have so you've got your two houses of parliament here. You've got your lower house and you've got your upper house. Daniel Andrews is the Australian Labour Party and of the Labour Party in the upper house, which is where the bill gets voted in on. um, You've got 17 members of the Labour Party and then the rest are crossbenchers and you've got a Liberal Party, you've got Liberal Lib Dems, you've got like all these mix. Um, We've got some a couple of Greens, I think maybe well, maybe only one Green Party there or two. Um, So they have to try and get uh, 20. So a a 2020 vote will tie it. And that means that it doesn't pass, but they need to try and get that extra one. And there's 17 of them and they have managed to get three crossbenchers. So Tuesday, they said, oh, 100 percent, this is emergency. This needs to be passed and needs to be passed today. So out of the smoke came a wild card. So we have one of uh, Daniel Andrews uh, ministers for the Labour Party, Adam Somurek, Um who has been under an IBAC investigation. So it's an anti-corruption hearing that's been going on for weeks now. And basically he sang like a canary last week 
he sang and he sang such a sweet tune. And he uh, decided that he had vowed months ago he wasn't going to talk in Parliament or he wasn't going to vote. And he decided last week in the midst of all of this on Wednesday, he went to the Hurl Sun newspaper and told them he would be going into Parliament and he was going to vote and he was going to be voting no. So that would leave it with his vote a tie that it will not pass. Thursday morning came. So here we are, voting day. Now, bear in mind, the protest has been going on every single day and night outside Parliament. There is people outside it that they've actually uh, decided they take a, a leaf of the, out of the page of Denmark's book. Is it Denmark where they have their pots and pans? So they're literally cannot hear themselves in Parliament with the people that are outside. They've DJs. It's a street party every single day. And people are sending. Like they like to me here at home if I wanted to, I could send pizzas to them. This is what people are doing. They're supporting the protesters when they can't be there themselves. Um, so yeah, Adam Samurek and when they frightened, frightened Daniel Andrews and uh, they it didn't get voted on Thursday. Didn't they? Oh, it's no longer an emergency. They'll wait till the next sitting because they now have to try and convince another cross bencher to cross over and vote with them. But all the cross benchers have been shunned for months that they're not willing to give on this. So we'll see. OK, so it's looking very, very good. And, you know, as I am listening to you there, um, I'm feeling a little bit sad because there the people of Melbourne have really risen up to push back against what's actually happening to you. There's no pushback apparently in Ireland we're talking about. And uh, there is a report in today's Sunday Business Post that uh, the government here are currently uh, hoping to rush through legislation before the middle of December that will extend the emergency laws uh, relating to uh, being able to impose lockdowns, further lockdowns and so on, to extend those laws into the middle of 2022. And they want this legislation to be rushed through here uh, without any pre-legislative scrutiny. And uh, there is a report in today's Sunday Independent that the government is currently considering uh, making it mandatory to have a third uh, vaccine in order to keep one's vaccine passport valid. But um, there doesn't seem to be any pushback here. Just to finish up uh, with you, Bernie, listening to you there uh, describe what's happening in Melbourne and you're on the other side of the world seems remarkably similar to what has been going on here in Ireland and indeed what has been happening uh, um, across Europe. It seems quite extraordinary that, um, that this should be happening. And I suppose it raises the question, are the heads of states in various um, countries around the world operating according to a script? Oh, every day I'm more and more and more convinced I hear Michal Martin, I see Stephen Donnelly, and I rang, fam I screenshotted it, and I rang family, I, everything. And I said, this is just what our premier, it's like some of the lingo, the terminology that that uh, Stephen Donnelly and, and them are using, are, it's, it's the same terminology as here. Really, word for word of what's being said here is what's getting said at home. And I could bet, I'd bet $10,000 with anybody that our press conference here tomorrow will be the press conference in Ireland in three or four days time. Exact same wording, everything. Um, and it's scary and it's frightening. And people at home need to start in their own towns. Stop this. Oh, there's no point saying anything. Stop this. Oh, it's somebody else's problem. Oh, sure, it'll be fine. Ah, sure, it'll be grand. People were like that over in Australia. It's, ah, oh, she'll be right. That's what they say here. And that's what they said for a long time. And now it's like, no, actually, she won't be right. There's nothing right about this. This is a worldwide script. I definitely there seems to be the same wording, same terminology, same thing happening. And 
people, as I was saying, like people are, you know, they're standing back and letting it happen. And, you know, everything, we're, we're, we're just about 100 years of free state now. Like, <laughs> can you call it free? Can you call it free where you have to show a vaccine passport to go to a restaurant? That's not free, you know, where you're under the threat of, winter blackouts we've had internet blackouts here on big days we've had media blackouts where the protests were happening and they actually got the media blocked from being at the protest because they didn't want them to see that rubber bullets were being fired into people's backs that children got capsicum sprayed in the face like we had a, an elderly lady in her 70s get knocked to the ground and spray painted or spray pepper sprayed like people in ireland need to start in their own locality they need to start reaching out to their TDs because those TDs need to be reminded that they are there because the people put them there. They work for the people. The people don't work for them. They're like, this is not how it works. It's meant to be, it's meant to be about democracy an open debate. But there seems to be nobody debating in Ireland. And you've seen me recently, Anne, and probably where I'm calling out some of members of the opposition and I continue to do so that I'd say they probably hit, but I actually support them. But I'm still calling them out because if there's somebody has to say something here, nobody is saying anything, nobody's calling out, nobody's been held accountable. I mean, where are these papers? Where are these papers to even justify where these lockdowns came out of? They're reasoning, you know? Do the means justify the end? No, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Okay, well, on that note, we shall bring our conversation to a close, Bernie. I, I want to thank you so much for that wonderful, insightful account into what is happening in Melbourne, in the state of Victoria, in southern Australia. To you who have been watching, I want to thank you. M Compass Media is a new news platform that has been set up by myself and Dr. Finbar Markey. We'll never ask you for money or financial contributions, but what we do ask you is to go to our Facebook page. Please uh, press the follow button and uh, the like button and uh, do likewise on our YouTube channel, M Compass Media, and our website is mcompassmedia.com. We are completely reliant on you to share this video, to get this news out to a much wider audience. Once again, thank you for watching. And until we meet again on the state we're in, Banat de Arif Galeer. <laughs>